And welcome back to Capitol Tonight. Well, normally at the end of July, lawmakers are away on their vacations. They're soaking up sun at their summer homes. But this is, of course, far from your typical year. The state budget is still unfinished, and there are a dozen intriguing primary races. All of this makes very good fodder for my next guests. They are the insiders, veterans of the Albany political scene, who join us each week to weigh in on what's happening on the campaign trail and also at the Capitol. Joining us tonight is Bob Bilafiori. He is the former press secretary to ex-governor George Pataki, now a senior partner at Eric Mower & Associates. And across the table from him is Bruce Jory, a former senior advisor to two former Democratic governors, now a consultant with Corning Place Consulting and also an adjunct professor of political science at UAlbany. Gentlemen, thank you very much as always for joining me. You're very you well. betcha. Everybody looks rested and tan, yes. etc. But of course, there's um, a lot here to tan, let me tell you. Yes, there's a lot expansive Right, never mind, we won't go there. Okay. On both the right and the left. <laughs> yeah, okay, so um, normally we would be in vacation mode, but we are not. The yeah. lawmakers are due back here tomorrow at 6. Um, what say you about this session, which looks like nothing will get done? We talked to um, Democratic uh, Conference leader John Sampson today, and it looks like he doesn't even have 32 members to count on. What's amazing is how far we have gotten away from what has always worked in terms of settling budgets in closing sessions productively, which is you have a series of orchestrated leaders' meetings and three-way or five-way meetings down through the staff level, almost like a collective bargaining process where you whittle away at issues. And instead of that, which was the model of Nelson Rockefeller, Hugh Carey, Mario Cuomo. Late budgets, and though, all those Late budgets, stuff. but they got it done. And what's missing here is they, they pop these special sessions, but there's no background of work product coming out of negotiations, so they don't know what they're going to produce. So you're left with newspaper articles where close aides to the governor are saying, we don't expect anything to happen, we're just going to embarrass them. And, and surprise, surprise, not productive. Bob? Well, uh, some might say the legislature has been on vacation most of the year. Uh, so, so coming from I am not so one of those people. Coming just from for July, the record, just be, this just is be Bob Bill, if you are responsible for uh, himself. Some other people might be saying that. Right. Uh, look, uh, what, uh, what Bruce is talking about is true, but the, the dynamics this year are very different. And what you lack, what you had in those other circumstances that you lack now is trust yeah. among the three members. The speaker doesn't really know what he's got with the Senate Democratic leader. Neither of those two guys know what they have on the second floor with the governor. You've got a, you've got an unelected. Right? In the past, you had elected governors very rarely. With you, Carey, you had an elected governor who was not running for re-election. Now you have an unelected governor not running for re-election. Well, who is more dangerous to the legislature than that? Yeah, with scandal issues cl clouding over yeah. his head too, and some leadership problems and a lot of stuff. Well, so. Right. So, so you, you have a, you have a very peculiar dynamic among those three people that have to be in the room to get this thing done. But what what each guy needs to have in the other two is trust that if you're going to talk about a deal, you're going to make a deal and see the thing through so that the old construct that Bruce is talking about can survive. And but none of that exists right now. With, I agree with you, but they are playing with political fire, particularly in the upstate and suburban districts where the polling data reveals a, a, a very angry anti-incumbent mood. And the longer this budget stays undone, the more people are getting angry, the more they're giving uh, challenge candidates an opportunity to, mm -hmm. uh, to win on both sides. Um, and, it, and it makes predicting the Senate, and you mentioned the primaries, but between the primaries and these challenge races, who can predict where the Senate's going to come out? Well, you know, the interesting thing is, and you mentioned it, Bob, three men in a room, it's really actually four. I mean, the fourth man in the room here is Andrew Cuomo. I, I have to say, I mean, the guy is clearly weighing in. If he's not making phone calls, which I'm sure that he's making phone calls, he's at least making his wishes known. I mean, you have the governor puts out a special agenda session with a property tax cap on it. And what do we see today? We see Andrew Cuomo with a Republican Nassau County executive in, in, in Long Island calling for a property tax cap. And then he releases the first ads of the entire campaign. And what are they about? A property tax well, cap. But, but the a shocking coincidence. Well, but the property tax cap registers 80 percent support yes. in the polls outside of New York City. In New York City, it's two-thirds support it. It's support on a bipartisan basis. It is most popular amongst Republicans in the downstate suburbs and bedrock Democrats upstate. It is a natural issue for anybody seeking to win a general election to campaign on. So it doesn't surprise me. Now, I think you actually had a role in this Mangano thing uh, because your story that. 
in Monday's Daily News talked about the fact a lot of Republicans are reaching out to Carl Palladino. And I think Andrew Cuomo senses that Carl Palladino, uh, if he won the Republican primary, could be a very divisive figure who seems to have a predilection for putting his foot in his mouth, for strange humor that borders on, on the culturally offensive. And if the Republicans tie themselves to Palladino, I think you're seeing Cuomo start to try to align himself with what he considers more moderate Republicans uh, in much the way Richard Nixon reached out to Democrats and Lyndon Johnson reached out to moderate Republicans to cement a landslide. That's what I think is Does it work, there. though? Well, I, I want to get back to a thing about the session, if I could. Sure. While the politics is certainly interesting, the, the bigger problem, aside from 212 legislators' political problems, is the fact that the state right now is a mess. Oh. Okay. But the, it's the, been a mess for a while. Yeah, well, but, but, it, but it, it, it just it gets worse and worse. And the gap between the size of the problems mm. and the capacity of Albany to try to solve them grows. And, and that, that, is a, you know, uh, that is a substantive problem that people need to pay attention to. A property tax cap is a very hot, sexy issue. It pulls through the roof. But, but George Pataki tried a property tax cap, and it got thrown off the table the first minute he put his STAR program out there. And that's because local governments, school districts, do not want to wrestle with the issue of collective bargaining with their teachers' unions. Until they do that, until local governments get a, local school districts get, a, get their handle on school spending, a property tax cap is one of those politically right. convenient slogans that won't change well, anything. John Faso said that, actually, in 2000.